Okay, let's discuss the strange creature behind me and what's basically one of the biggest stories in marine biology in the last few decades. The first ever video of an actual colossal squid swimming underwater. The video filmed by the Schmidt Ocean Institute and the Ocean Census partner during one of the expeditions in the South Atlantic. And just like with a lot of previous expeditions, this was basically a completely unexpected discovery. But in this case also an extremely rare discovery that's never been seen before by anyone. Because this is a really bizarre creature and it's just really good at avoiding us. And so the video itself is obviously in the description below, but today I wanted to briefly discuss the colossal squids and why they're so bizarre and also why this video is kind of fascinating. But first, what exactly are we looking at here? Well, this is actually just a baby. And it's a baby that's going to look entirely different in the next few years. Because as you're going to learn from this video, this somewhat unusual species tends to change dramatically as it grows up. And it's called colossal squid for a single reason. It is basically the largest invertebrate on the planet. An animal that can grow up to about 7 meters in length and weigh as much as 500 kilograms. And though there have been hints of even larger specimen, right now this is what's been confirmed so far. And we know that larger specimens exist because of this. This is a beak of a colossal squid. And this is how we knew these animals existed as far back as 1925. You can actually find the original link for the 1924-1925 discovery in the description below. But here this was a description of the first ever specimen that was discovered inside a stomach of a sperm whale that was commercially hunted a few months prior. So basically we know that sperm whales generally seem to like eating colossal squids. And over the years these beaks were discovered in a lot of different sources, actually even in seabirds, allowing researchers to eventually work out the overall size distribution for this somewhat bizarre species. As a matter of fact, based on the discovery from 1925, it's believed that this particular specimen was 46 feet or 14 meters long and at least 1100 pounds or 500 kilograms in weight. Way, way bigger than any invertebrate ever known. And actually even bigger than the famous giant squid. And by the way, yeah, don't confuse this with a giant squid, which is a slightly different animal. But ever since the original discovery of these beaks, it was really the reports from various fishermen that allowed us to basically understand a little bit more about this somewhat strange, somewhat elusive species. For example, one of the most famous discoveries prior to this was in 2007. This was the largest colossal squid discovered in one piece. Here this was a female, approximately 10 meters across and 450 kilograms in weight. And it was basically almost dead. And eventually the specimen was taken to New Zealand and preserved in a museum. But interestingly, this looks very different from this. And there's a really important reason for that, as we're going to discuss right now. So as I mentioned, this is still a baby, only approximately 30 centimeters across. And compared to the larger specimen, one thing here that stands out is it's somewhat bizarre cupola. It's actually transparent. As a matter of fact, it's not just the cupola, it's also a lot of its organs and even its eyes. Which is not the case for the larger specimen discovered here. And that's because colossal squids belong to a somewhat bizarre squid family. They're known as Crunchidae, or more commonly, glass squid. And the reason they're called glass squid is because all of them have transparent bodies. And they use this as a major adaptation and as a major survival strategy. But most glass squids, or most cranchids, usually occur in surface or midwater depths in various open oceans, with the transparency in this case offering camouflage. As a matter of fact, their body shape and even cells inside their skin are basically designed for maximum camouflage in order to hide from, for example, larger fish, from whales, or from a lot of other predators. And in marine biology, they're basically known as the masters of deep sea camouflage. They're extremely difficult to detect, and some of them even have bizarre light-producing organs that actually mimic illumination from above the squid and from below the squid to basically make them almost entirely invisible. And so yeah, this is like something out of science fiction, like basically the alien from Predator. As a matter of fact, for many of them, only some organs are still visible. Interestingly, for many of them, it's their digestive organs. Specifically, the digestive gland, which is very similar to our liver. But even here they actually created a bizarre adaptation. Instead of being horizontal like in other squids, here it's vertical in order to make it as invisible as possible. And in order to reduce the overall silhouette. And on top of this, compared to other squids, 
They also have a very bizarre adaptation when it comes to buoyancy. This is the only known animal that seems to use a very unusual solution of ammonia in order to control its overall buoyancy and in order to stay afloat at different depths. And so here, by consolidating ammonia in certain regions of their body, they can usually minimize energy costs required for buoyancy. But strangely enough, this organ and this ability to control buoyancy is actually something that's only developed in mature individuals and not in babies. Which could be one of the main reasons why we usually find much smaller and much younger squid near the surface and the older individuals are only seen really deep. So basically, as they grow up and as they develop, they learn how to control buoyancy much better and can thus stay at much deeper depths. But also, unlike other squid, glass squid also dramatically changes its body shape as it grows. As a matter of fact, in many species, the young do not look like mature individuals at all, and so for many years, there was actually a lot of misidentification, with certain species that were believed to be different actually turning out to be the same. It just some of them were older and some of them were younger. But I think the most important difference here is really the overall adaptation to light sensitivity and to the overall lifestyle. Unlike other squid, glass squid is actually super super difficult to find and they're really good at avoiding everyone. These animals are not just difficult to find, they're also extremely good at detecting anything that's coming toward them in order to then avoid it and to hide from it actively. So basically these are light avoiding animals. They're extremely sensitive to even minute changes in light signals, even at extreme depths where there's practically no light. And they actually do this in a lot of different ways, with the most common way being the ability to detect minute changes in photoluminescence coming from a lot of different plankton in the water. So basically, let's say there's some kind of a whale coming toward them. Because the whale moves water quite violently, it actually produces minute changes in light as a result of physical activity. This is the result of a lot of phytoplankton releasing light as something touches it or as something physically interacts with it. And so many of these glass squid can easily detect the light from hundreds of meters away when there is something coming toward them. So they basically developed a technique in detecting bioluminescence from extreme distances. And this is why many of them have humongous eyes. But the record goes to this guy. This is not just the biggest squid eye, this is the biggest eye in the animal kingdom. Their eyes can be as big as 11 inches or 27 centimeters across, or basically the size of a soccer ball. And they're designed specifically for detection of this very minute change in bioluminescence at extreme depths. And so whenever there's a whale coming toward them and it produces changes in bioluminescence, all specimens of glass squid try to escape while also trying to make themselves appear as invisible as possible. Which is kind of what was happening here as well because this squid did not want to get caught. And this is also the main reason why we basically have so much trouble finding them, because they're generally very good at detecting something and running away from it. But as I mentioned before, something actually changes as they grow up. As a matter of fact, as they grow older and older, they tend to go deeper and deeper in the water, their transparency and their skills to become invisible kind of disappear, and they slowly transform into, basically, a slightly different animal, or at least dramatically change their lifestyle, as they essentially now become one of the apex predators. Although even as grown-ups, they still use a lot of techniques that rely on being super quiet and practically invisible. And that's because they're technically ambush predators. They quietly wait for the prey to get really close, and then try to grab it with these enormous hooks, before trying to kill it with this beak. Which by the way is also one of the main difference between the colossal squid and the other members of the glass squid family. It seems to be the only species to possess these enormous hooks that it basically uses to catch various types of prey. And even this young one right here seems to possess them as well, suggesting that even as juveniles, they seem to already possess a lot of skills required to be an ambush predator. But nevertheless, this is still a bit of an anomaly when it comes to the family of glass squid. I mean, just the fact that they lose their transparency and even change their bodies so much that they become hunters and start to actively hunt prey already makes them so different from anything else. And from what we can tell, despite the fact that we don't see them very often, they seem to be super successful. And this is based on the fact that we discover a lot of beaks in a lot of different whales, and even the fact that a lot of fish that's caught coming from the deep ocean very often contains a lot of scars from the battle with the colossal squid. So basically in many cases, fish tends to run away, but is still left scarred. 
Statistically, out of about 800 fish that was examined, 10% contained scars from the colossal squid. And so once they become adults and once they become large enough, they basically never come to the surface ever again. They can easily survive very, very deep in the ocean and only have to feed once in a while. As a matter of fact, they seem to possess an extremely slow metabolic rate and only require something like 30 grams of prey every single day. So basically they just have to eat once every few months. Which also implies that its overall lifestyle is very likely super slow. It just kind of drifts around, using its eyes to observe everything around itself, and then slowly tries to approach its prey, ambushing it, and capturing the prey with its hooks. And because its eyes can detect even minute changes in plankton bioluminescence, it's basically able to see everything around itself, even super deep in the ocean. Here, studies have previously shown that it's able to see up to about 150 meters away from the squid through the observations of these changes, invisible to other species. And its eyes can also surprisingly glow in the dark. They actually have their own cells inside that create just a little bit of light, which seem to use a very specific symbiotic bacteria able to produce luminescence through chemical reactions. This is very likely used at super extreme depths when there is basically no light anywhere, so it can produce its own light just to see a little bit. Although in reality, right now nobody knows why this adaptation exists. This study by Peter Herring and his team explores this in more detail in the Journal of Zoology. But naturally, it also has its own predators as well, such as sperm whales I mentioned previously. And we know that sperm whales evolved to use something that the squid can basically not detect. Sperm whales use very high frequency clicks, with other whales using sonar, which unfortunately these squids cannot hear at all. They can usually hear much lower frequencies, such as the ones produced by various fish, and so the only way they can detect predators, such as whales, is by using their eyes. Intriguingly enough though, the overall threshold of detection when it comes to light is actually surprisingly similar to the threshold of the acoustic sonar produced by the whale. And so here this is actually a super interesting example of co-evolutionary adaptation between the prey and the predator. It's quite likely that the vision and the sonar co-evolved, representing a kind of an evolutionary battle. But unfortunately, that's basically all we know about these really bizarre and very fascinating animals. Only 12 complete colossal squid specimens have been recovered as of 2025, and only 6 were adults. And so this is one of the least studied marine animals, just because it adapted to survive and adapted to avoid everything, so we can never find them. But luckily for us, we now have the first ever video of a juvenile. Which means that we're going to possibly have some new studies coming out really soon that try to use the analysis from this video in order to determine how the species grows and what techniques it seems to use in order to survive these super harsh environments. And really one of the main reasons why this is so exciting is because this is technically the largest and the most massive invertebrate ever. Ironically, filmed exactly 100 years after its original discovery. But even compared to its cousin, the giant squid, this one just seems to be even more elusive and even more mysterious. Which means that once we find out something else, and once scientists discover something else super unusual about this squid, we'll come back and talk about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.